Hello, welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. The union government has announced amendments in the angel tax rules. With these changes, a whole host of investors from 21 countries have been exempted from paying angel tax. These include banks and insurance entities, government and related investors, as well as any entity registered with SEBI in Category 1 as foreign portfolio investors will also not attract angel tax. The Central Board of Direct Taxes has now proposed changes to determine the fair market value and plans to introduce five additional valuation methods. The move is anticipated to provide clarity in reflecting actual valuations of new age companies and small businesses. To discuss this further, I'm now joined by Samir Gupta, National Leader, Tax at EY India. Samir, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Give us a sense of how these changes to angel tax norms and especially the countries that have been excluded from this list, including Singapore, Netherlands, Mauritius. How could this exclusion actually impact the amount of money flowing into startups in India? So thanks, Parishit, for having me over. And uh, I think, you like, like you rightly said, uh, you know, the intent with which the provisions were introduced uh, was really around the whole black money uh, angle and getting uh, investments uh, from jurisdictions, uh, which were not pedigree jurisdictions. And to that extent, you know, excluding uh, jurisdictions like Singapore, Mauritius, Netherlands, uh, you know, that does uh, seem to be a bit of a challenge and a bit of a struggle. Because quite honestly, if you look at the flows of FDI, uh, these, entry, these countries do have significant investments coming into India. Uh, so to that extent, you know, we will have a challenge uh, with respect to uh, pedigreed investments uh, from these very robust jurisdictions uh, and the flow of funds uh, coming into India. Mm. And uh, I would go on to say that, you know, while uh, we are looking at startups, even for multinational corporations, you know, a lot of investments come from these uh, jurisdictions where you have regional holding companies in Singapore, uh, where money comes into India for capital expansion into mm. the subsidiaries. And those will also, to um, a, a lot of extent, mm. uh, stand affected. Uh, so, so to, all in all, uh, I do think that right. you know, it's been a bit restrictive in which they have come out with the provisions. Right. So, uh, you said that this was done to check tax evasion, check money laundering. But if we ask you yeah. about the quantum of FDI, quantum of investments also coming into startups uh, from, like you said, pedigreed investors in these uh, jurisdictions, FDI we know fell 16% in FY23. Uh, what is the further extent to which it could be impacted as a result of these moves? So I think to speculate would not be fair, Parikshit. But like I said, you know, we all know that... Uh, a lot of uh, global supply chains are also moving to India, uh, you know, especially with the advantage that India offers. I do believe uh, that, therefore, you know, people will have to rework uh, the entire uh, investment thesis uh, from a valuation standpoint and basically work back with the provisions. It's not that investments won't come from these jurisdictions. It's just that they will now have to, you know, grapple mm -hmm. uh, with a lot more, lot more uh, articulation with respect to benchmarking the pricing as well as the effort and energy that will go into valuation pricing will be a big issue which they will have to factor in you know this is one thing which uh, will uh, now hmm. need to be taken care of which wasn't required hitherto hmm. right just to ask you about multinationals uh, we have seen how uh, the the corporate structures have been uh, in a way, left out, or this notification has been silent on corporate structures as far as angel tax provisions go. Now, if you've got a foreign company, if you've got an MNC, which is infusing, infusing fresh capital into its right. Indian entity, what kind of a scrutiny or what additional scrutiny will it be subjected to as a result of this notification? Yeah, so like I said, you know, the notification, obviously, uh, I mean, if you look at the uh, law change, right? Non-resident investors have now been brought into the valuation uh, equation, uh, given that, you know, we already had that in place in the context of resident investors. Uh, now, what has changed, of course, is that the foreign investors will need to work back and see that the value at which they are infusing capital into their subsidiaries is in congruence with the valuation methodologies that have been prescribed. And uh, not just that, 
you know, a lot of investment is also coming in to India uh, from global funds as well as private equity funds. Because if you look at the uh, FDI investments into India, a lot of money is also coming in from strategic investors like the funds, uh, like private equity funds. And they will also need to now, you know, work back uh, looking at these valuation methodologies and bring in the value of uh, investments coming into the equity shares, considering these uh, uh, methodologies that have been prescribed. So it's both. It's not just, you know, uh, global parents of MNCs, uh, but it's also strategic investors like private equity funds that will have to work back with these provisions and see that they are in line with the valuation methodologies prescribed. Uh, could this also delay the approvals? Would this be a direct consequence? Delay in approvals for bona fide investments? Well, from an approval point of view, you know, I would just say that they need to factor this into their timeline for investments. So, you know, a lot of investments at times uh, could be, you know, uh, could be uh, needs to be very agile from a, a time frame point of view. So, not from so much from an approval point of view but more in terms of, you know, your investment cycle from the time you decide to make a strategic invest to actually consummating the transaction. That's where you need to, you know, be uh, clear that you factored in uh, the uh, new provisions uh, that have now been provided. So, so it's more from that perspective that you need to uh, be able to bring this into play. And also if you are having investors, so if it's a joint venture investment as well, uh, then you also need to, you know, look at some of uh, the uh, valuation methodologies, uh, both for the non-resident investor as well as the no uh, resident investor. So, for instance, I'll just give you an example. If you are having a company which is raising money uh, from a non-resident investor, as you know, for a non-resident investor, now they have increased the valuation methodologies that need to be followed. And if uh, the valuation methodology, mm -hmm. like the comparable uh, uh, pricing, gives you like a 200 rupees per share, whereas the DCF valuation is only 150, mm -hmm. the non-resident can benefit from the comparable pricing at 200, whereas the resident investor would still need to be, mm -hmm. uh, uh, will get bogged down uh, by the valuation methodology because for them, the comparable pricing has not been uh, prescribed. So you will have those kind of issues also playing out right. in terms of uh, the investments coming into India, mm -hmm. which is where I think a lot of energy and effort, like I was saying, will now need to be factored in, which wasn't being done earlier. Mm -hmm. Very briefly, in 10 seconds, does this impact the ease of doing business, focus of the government? Does this run contrary to that? Well, I would just say that, you know, while they have tried to bring in provisions uh, which are to attract or, or, to, or to deal with certain objectives, right, the manner in which they have been laid out uh, do come out to be uh, cumbersome, as well as, you know, from the perspective of uh, foreign investors, right, uh, these were things which were not there earlier. They have now been brought in. And I do think that to that extent, you know, uh, there could have been much more that they could have done. Uh, so from an ease of business point of view, I think, you know, this does uh, create challenges uh, for the foreign investors. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Samir, for joining us, uh, talking about the changes to the angel tax norms and how this could be more cumbersome for foreign investors as well. We are uh, going to take a short break here, but don't go anywhere.